that view certainly worth the flight. Hey guys, and welcome to Petroped, and welcome to Scotland. And welcome to the Kia EV9. Now, I did a studio shoot with this car earlier in the year, and since that day, I've been so much looking forward to actually getting behind the wheel of one. I saw it do its dynamic debut at the Goodwood Festival of Speed. So to come up here to Scotland and put it through its paces, it's gonna be a really cool day. Well, actually, it's a bit more than a cool day because it's currently minus two, <laughs> which is really, really challenging conditions to put an electric car through its paces. So I've got a whole day with the car, lots of beautiful roads to drive on, lots of beautiful scenery. But I think this should be really interesting putting to the test Kia's new flagship all-electric six or seven seat SUV. So yes, welcome to beautiful Scotland. Honestly, I think I have surpassed myself today. I don't think I've ever had a more beautiful backdrop to do a piece to camera in eight years of YouTube. That is beautiful. I think it's called Elaine Donan Castle. I'm bound to have said that wrong, but it is beautiful. Anyway, here's the new EV9. Now, this video isn't so much a deep dive into all the technical details and functions of the car. I did a studio shoot earlier this year. I'll put a link above just here. If you want to go and find out about the real ins and outs of the car, then head over and watch that video first. But ever since I did that studio shoot, I've been itching to get my hands on this car. Looks wise, well, now it's out in the wild, away from that enclosed studio. I think the looks are very edgy and really push boundaries. And I like that a lot. It does remind me of something out of Judge Dredd though. And actually, when you look at the new electric cars that Kia are launching, um, Kia, I think they're going to do EV3, EV4, EV5. They are all very similar design language. That very, it, it almost looks like a concept car that was drawn on someone's um, computer screen and just made as it was. I think it looks fantastic. Um, I can imagine some people aren't going to like it at all. I think that the, the design is, is edgy enough and pushes the boundaries enough for some people to just not, not get it at all. I actually really, really like it. So what have we got? Well, there's three different model choices of EV9. Let's go around the back of the car and I will tell you more. Now, before any of you say anything, the car's filthy. We've been driving for about two and a half hours to get to this location. It's very cold here in Scotland. There's lots and lots of grit and salt on the roads and therefore the car is absolutely filthy. But in terms of trim level, there are three trim levels, the Air, the GT Line and the GT Line S. I'll tell you more about pricing and specification a bit later on in the video, but they've all got the same 99.8 kilowatt hour battery. So let's just call it a 100 kilowatt hour battery. The Air, however, is just a single motor with 200 bhp and 350 newton meters of torque. But that's the car that's going to give you the longest range. Kia are estimating just under 350 miles of range for the Air. The other two, the GT Line and the GT Line S, are a dual motor setup, a motor on each axle. Same battery pack, but much, much more power. We're now talking 378 bhp and 700 newton meters of torque. Now, as you can imagine, this is a seven seat, very heavy battery electric vehicle. Its curb weight's about 2.7 tons. Its maximum gross weight is over three tons. So it's a heavy old thing, but the GT Line and GT Line S will still dispatch the 62 Sprint in about 5.1 seconds, which is just insane. We might have to put that to the test a little bit later. They come in 7C or in this particular model that I'm testing today is the GT Line S, but it has the six seat configuration. So the middle row of seats, instead of it being a bench seat for three people, it's two individual seats that will swivel. But I think rear styling on point. So. There are some beautiful roads around here today. I think it's about time we get in the car 
and go through the drive modes and explore what this car's like to drive. As I said, I've done all the technical stuff, the vehicle to load stuff, the size of the boot, the overall dimensions. What I haven't been able to do up until today is tell you what it feels like to drive. So let's go and see how I get on. Before we get driving, however, I just want to show you the interior because it is a stunning, stunning thing. The car I did the studio shoot with was a pre-production car. It's pretty much finished, to be fair. But this, the touch of the materials, the choice of materials, the whole look uh, is really very special. So let's head up onto the roads. I, I actually think I made a mistake, by the way. I'm going to correct myself. This car doesn't do zero to 62 in 5.1 seconds. It does it in 5.3. I think you'll forgive me two tenths, right? Anyway, let's head on up the road. But yeah, what a cool car. Now then, now we're out driving. Shall we just take a moment to appreciate the beautiful scenery that we're in? Wow. It's so lovely. I've been struggling to work out when to turn the cameras on and when to start my filming. But let's start off in eco mode. So the car has three drive modes, eco, normal and sport. And then there's an individual setting that you can go in and customize yourself. Eco, as the name suggests, is basically going to try and get you your most economical driving. Now, when we got in these vehicles at the airport they were about 95 percent charged and had an indicated range of about 250 miles it is very cold today as i said it's minus two so although this particular ev9 that we're in has a quoted range of up to 333 miles in colder conditions we're clearly losing a little bit of that so i think 260 270 is probably much more likely Interestingly, there's a display on the sat-nav that tells you where your uh, energy is going. So 80% of the energy is currently going to driving, 16% to climate, and then just 4% to the electronics. I guess that's things like running the sat-nav and so on. Um, driving position, really comfortable. This car on the inside just feels so premium. It's got a superb selection of materials, many of them eco-friendly the steering wheel it's a bit bulky for me and I'm not I'm just struggling to find somewhere comfortable to put my hands it's just so big and so unwieldy um, but that's a, a minor criticism I guess everything else I love these two infotainment screens um, the main one in front has all the information that I need the big one there with sat nav I'm running the uh, native sat nav for the press route that we've got today and then there's a separate screen in the middle for your climate controls there's some proper buttons on there but all i would say is it's it's obscured by the steering wheel so to actually see that screen with the climate controls you kind of have to do that which which isn't ideal it's nice that there's a separate screen and a separate set of controls so you don't have to go into the infotainment system to adjust your climate but that screen is obscured by the steering wheel but apart from that a really nice comfortable driving position and this seat i've been driving already for a good hour or so uh, hour and 20 minutes before i've actually turned the cameras on and the seat's very very comfortable so the eco mode deadens the throttle off a little bit it's still got enough punch this is the fast one remember but i think we should then step up through the drive modes Wow. Okay, let's step up the drive mode. So I'm gonna go up into normal. Now normal is a compromise really between eco and sport. Just a little bit more pep, a little bit. They just changed the, the power and torque curves a little bit, just to make it a little bit more performance oriented, but still trying to be as efficient as possible. Now coming down this hill, what I've also got uh, on the back of the steering wheel are uh, two paddles to change the aggressiveness of the one pedal driving, what's called the eye pedal. Um, and at the moment, I've just put that into max. So coming down that hill, I could retard the car and try and recuperate as much energy as possible. If I lift off, 
it's a it's a pretty aggressive one pedal driving actually so depending on what you're doing on this kind of twisty road super low sun today really tricky conditions to film and drive to be fair um yeah if i if i now come into now the sun's gone behind that big mountain so I, on on the on the i pedal drive i can just balance the car on the throttle and it's it's a it's a really nice one pedal driving if i don't want it to be that much there are four levels i just back it off using the right hand paddle and make it more aggressive using the left hand paddle i'm now in the middle setting it's it's there a little bit but it's it's not so much at all and if you go all the way down to uh, lv0 um there's no there's no regen braking at all i'm now right hand or right foot completely off the throttle and the car's just coasting so again you can you can play with that quite nicely in any of the modes actually but on a road like this the more aggressive um one pedal driving just means you don't have to actually use the foot brake you can just back off balance the car and it's just beautiful but oh my days look at that we actually came down here i came down here when i did the nc 500 tour uh in the gt4 a couple of years ago now uh with uh with sec private members and gt tours i remember coming through this tunnel sadly there's no tunnel noise because it's an electric car Don't. so i thought i'd pull up on the side of the road have a beautiful view and just play with these swivel seats because this is the six seat version uh, with the swiveled seats. You can get a three bench seat here to turn it into a seven seater. But the idea here is you can stop, you know, and have a, a bit of a picnic with a family, spin the seats around. It's a really nice place, this. So let's just chat about pricing. So the EV9 range starts with the Air, which is their entry level model. So that's from £64,995. But that is just a single motor and um, that's 200 horsepower 350 newton meters of torque and that's the one with the most range up to 349 miles of range and it comes with really good spec 19 inch alloys where the other two variants have 21s but yeah really nice then you go up to uh, the gt line now that's from uh, 73,245 pounds, but that now is a dual motor. So that's got the 378 BHP, 700 Newton meters of torque. The range does go down a little bit to 313 miles, but now that's on 21 inch wheel, GT line exterior styling and, uh, uh, and some more kit. Then you've got the GT line S, which is the model that I'm sat in, uh, and that is from £75,995. Um, and that also has the option of uh, the two uh, swivel seats if you want it, but that's more money if you go for the swivel seats. Now, I know that sounds like a lot of money, and it is a lot of money, but this car for me is pitching Kia at a totally new audience. I think they're going to take Kia owners with them, especially people who've had Sorento. I love my Sorento plug-in hybrid that I ran as a long-termer. This is now the car that takes over from Sorento as the, if you like, the range topping car for Kia. But I think they're going to eke into some real premium SUV customers into Land Rover, for example, because there aren't that many seven-seat SUV all EVs out there. So if you wanted to run a car of that type, as let's say a company car and you want lower benefit in kind and you want all of the other benefits you get from having an EV. I think that's where this car sits really, really nicely. So I know that those numbers are big numbers for a Kia, but I've said this with a number of brands recently, you need to put the Kia badge to one side because the fit and finish of this car, the choice of materials, the way it feels to drive, just simply don't feel like a Kia. This is one of the most premium feeling cars I've driven. It's absolutely lovely in here. Okay, let's go up to the final drive mode, Sport, to untap all of the performance. Now, the first thing you notice, apart from the change in throttle response because of the different power and torque curves, is the bolsters in these seats squeeze in to hug you and almost turn into a sports seat. They're pretty supportive anyway, but now, now I feel like I'm in a racing bucket. 
I am going to be a bit careful today because these roads are super slippy and super icy. But the turn of pace, the the throttle response, the acceleration, that instant torque for a car that weighs so much is very, very impressive. A dual motor setup, one on the front axle, one on the rear axle. It's got torque vectoring, so it's basically going to use a combination of of, of uh, working out the best place to put the torque in terms of wheels. It might even use the brakes just to help with turning and so on. Very, very clever. Some really advanced driving systems on here. It's even got a crosswind uh, or anti-crosswind assistance. It's a really clever car, this. But considering it weighs 2.7 tonnes, it actually feels pretty dynamic, to be honest. It's got a nice steering feel. I mean, clearly there's a lot of mass to this car, but because it's a skateboard design, all the batteries are on the floor. And as I said already, that, that gives huge amounts of scope for the internal design of this car. Lots of room, no transmission tunnels, and all of that kind of stuff. What it also means is the car has a really low center of gravity. And what that means is down a road like this is actually <laughs> A very very impressive car to drive and it's got a hell of a lot of punch out of the corners clearly on the way into a corner you just have to be ready for the car not to slow down quite as much as you'd like because it weighs so much and I'm just being a bit wary just in case this roads icy yeah I drove a Cayman GT4 down this road and enjoyed it a great deal. And I have to say, I've just enjoyed driving this EV9 down there. Now it is icy, but I think we should try a launch. Three, two, one. Ooh. 60. So yeah, this very nearly three ton 7C SUV will do naught to 60 in just a smidge over five seconds that's impressive and there's just no grip at all today and it didn't it didn't even bat an eyelid wow wow what a place scotland is and what a road this is so my final impressions of kia ev9 i found today fascinating i've been looking forward to driving this car since i did the studio shoot because it just intrigued me. I love its looks, they're edgy and different. And if you want a car that makes a statement that's different from anything else on the road, I can't see why you'd look, you'd look past EV9 because it just does that for me. It looks like something out of the future. But I was a bit worried about what it would drive like. It's a big car, it's five meters in length. It's just shy of two meters wide. It weighs 2.6, 2.7 tons. And I thought it might be a bit overwhelming and a bit, I don't know, just too big for these roads. And it, it's really not. It doesn't drive like a big car at all. It feels quite nimble, actually. You have to be wary and conscious of its weight and its size, but not in a, a bad way. You can tip it into corners and, and really enjoy it. And then when you're on a bit of road like this, have fun. Um, a couple of things. I'd like to spend a bit more time with this really just to put that range number to the test because I think the 330 to 350 mile range that is quoted I think that's a summer optimistic range in the winter it's been super cold today minus two was the lowest I've seen today I think 250 to 275 miles is much much more realistic um, but it's got an 800 volt architecture, this car, so that means very rapid charging. All of the EV9s come with a heat pump. Um, and if you use the onboard sat-nav, which I've been using today, by all accounts, that integration with that sat-nav and the charge network is something Kia have really worked on. And when you plug in a charge stop into the sat-nav, it will precondition the battery so that when you get to the charge point, the battery is at its optimum temperature to enable rapid charging. And if you were to plug into a 350 kilowatt charger, you could get a five to 80% charge in this car in about 24 minutes, apparently. 
And let's face it, you know, after 250 miles, you're ready for a break. 24 minutes is barely long enough to get a coffee and have a wee. So that's really where this car um, comes into its own, that rapid charging element, because I think people will really want to do miles in this car. Things I'm not so keen on, I've mentioned the steering wheel, it just, just feels a bit big and a bit thick. That central screen for the climate controls, it's just, it's just awkward to see it. I like the fact it's there and I like the fact you've got real buttons. It's just ergonomically not in a great place at all. And I guess we need to probably have a chat about the price as well because, you know, 75 odd grand for a Kia, that's punchy, really, really punchy. However, it is punchy for a Kia, but if you, you know, the, the build quality, the feeling of premium end car in this EV9 is right up there with some of the best I've been in. And if you look at the competition, you look at something like a BMW iX, which I've driven and spent time in. Amazing, amazing cars. One of the best EVs to drive, but they're over 100,000 quid. Save yourself 25 grand, buy one of these. If you looked at the natural competitors, the kind of market that I'm sure Kia want to go into, um, if you looked at something like Land Rover, well, Land Rover don't have an all-electric SUV. If you're in a Range Rover or a Range Rover Sport uh, or a Discovery 5 and you're wanting to go electric but maintain the practicality of six or seven seats, you can't do that with the Land Rover brand right now. So it's a natural thing to look at this and, and you look at something like Benefit in Kind and the, 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 the financial benefits you'll get and that, that will be really attractive for, for, for some people. So, you know, the, there aren't that many big, three row seats so whether that's uh, six or seven seat all electric SUVs stands out on its own and the numbers the numbers paint the picture looking at the press pack today they've already had in the UK alone 800 pre-orders of EV9 and it, it's not even been driven yet by customers these are the first drives this week and deliveries start in January and Kia UK expect to sell around 4,000 of these in 2024 so it's clear that talking to their customers, talking to their dealers, that, that they're seeing a lot of love for the EV9 already. People are intrigued by it and are interested by it. So yeah, it's been a really, really fascinating day. And just Scotland have blown me away again. Anyway, put it in the comments below what you think of Kia EV9. But if you enjoyed that, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, Please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. But I shall see you on the next film, guys. You take care. Drive safe.